friends welcome to this video this is another follow up video for rip version 2 we have configured rip here 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 so these three routers are rip now the objective of this video is to understand the metric so we know the uh, rip uses hop count as a metric so for example if this pc0 needs to reach pc1 here and we are doing a icm pipping to 2.1 from here the packet will move to the switch it will go to the router 2 so the router 2 will see in its routing table what is the least hop count way to reach PC1 which happens to be this path because here only one router is there so let's check if it's the same case we'll log into this router and show IP root rip and you can see here 192.168.2.0 here we have uh, which is going towards 3.2 so 3.2 happens to be this interface uh, you can see uh, the cost is uh, sorry the metric is 120 that is the default for rip and hop count is 1 so the hop count it is 1 so one router means 0 the another one means 1 so this router the same where the info routing information is, uh, is you can see is available will know that it has to reach one another router to reach this say uh, interface on the PC1 also you can see for 3.4 we have two hop counts uh, two routes via 3.9 and 3.2 so 3.4 is over this interface uh, this one right the C and this router can reach this interface either from this or from this and in both the case we have one hop count so let's see which path will be preferred if I do an ICMP ping here from this PC so we will know that the packet which will traverse towards the switch router R2 and will go to R3 then switch 1 and then PC1 and will follow the same path for the ICMP eco reply as well because at this uh, router as well we will have we will be having only one hop count for these this route and as uh, rip prefers uh, hop count so we will know it will only take this path now we will try to uh, suppose there is uh, any scenario where you want the packet to rather than choose this path you want the packet to prefer this path so we know that the metric for rip is 120 so we will try to configure a static route with a metric which is less than 120 maybe 100 and we'll see what will happen and we'll try to create a static route uh, greater than this metric like 150 and then we'll see what will happen so let's do this uh, I will define only the forward route on this router router sorry IP route alright so I'm going to define an IP route okay this means to reach the network 2.0 which happens to be this uh, network I sh I'm creating a static route that I should forward the packet interface 3.9 which happens to be this interface and first let me give it a metric of 100 so if I see the static route will give me a metric of 100 here and if I see the, all the routes so you can see for 192.168.2.0 we have a metric of 100 here 
and 2.0 is not in the routing table because this would be the preferred route now if I try to ping it again you will see the packet will traverse this path for the forward that is the ICMP eco request and this path for the ICMP eco reply so in this way you can administrate uh, manage a network or administer your network and uh, this is really helpful in scenarios where you want uh, good control as well as you don't want to have uh, you know any problems uh, with the static route suppose this interface is down your packet will be reachable from this path and if this router wants to reach this network your it can use this path to traverse to this network so the benefit of dynamic routing is the reachability will be there if there is any loss of redundant path but uh, keep you much greater control over the network so we saw that if we configure a static route with higher metric the higher metric means uh, uh, a lower number uh, it will follow that rule but what if we give it a lower metric like well, let me give it 200 if I see the IP route so you see we here we have the IP route for 200 and we I'm not seeing any still the IP route for 2.0 try to check from where this uh, packet will traverse so so the packet will go to the switch it will go to the router and it will take uh, the path which is uh, you can say has lesser metric 2.0 it's not showing it here ok so you can see it is earlier it was not updating in the your routing table you see here this path was coming from the static route but now it is updated using rip so you cannot see the static route here this is uh, what we called a floating static route so the floating static route will help you you know uh, will come into role when there is any problem with uh, dynamic route so it is kind of a backup route which will help you get the connectivity when there is a problem with the uh, dynamic route I hope the concept of metric is clear to you with this video and uh, you also understand how RIP calculates the distance between uh, two networks using the hop count and please try to simulate this in your uh, GNS3 or packet tracer in case you have any queries just l let me know and thanks for watching this video have a great day